Hello, my name's Mel. Welcome to my world. And for those of you that are new to my channel, I'm currently turning this Mercedes Vario into an off-grid camper van. When I finish converting this Vario into a camper van, I shall go off on my treasure hunting adventures. So if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Now you're probably wondering, what is this big blue cylinder stood here in front of me? Well, this is a calorifier. So today we're diving into a topic that's near and dear to every van lifer's heart, and that is heating water on the road. And one of the biggest advantages of using a calorifier system in your van is its efficiency. It harnesses the heat generated from your engine that would usually just go to waste. This means you can enjoy hot water without relying on external sources like propane or electricity. Another pro of using a calorifier is the convenience. With a calorifier, you have hot water on demand whenever your engine is running. This is perfect for those spontaneous road trips or off-grid adventures. But of course, no system is without its drawbacks. One of the main cons of a calorifier is its dependency on the engine. If you're parked up over an extended period of time and your engine isn't running, you simply won't have any access to hot water and just like any water system in your van it means you have to carefully plan your water usage and possibly invest in an alternative heating method for times when the engine isn't running but don't worry there are solutions for these situations as you can see this chlorifier has actually actually got some electric cables coming from it it's got two in fact so this calorifier also has an electric element built into it. So I can use 240 volt, say from a campsite plug-in or a petrol generator. And it also has a 12 volt system as well. So I can actually use the solar panels on my van via my leisure batteries to heat the water in my calorifier. But what if it's a cloudy day? What if it's the middle of winter and I'm parked up somewhere and I don't particularly want to run my engine? Well, there is another solution. It's called an engine preheater. Allow me to show you one. Just need to get it out of the box first. So this is an engine preheater. It works very similar to a diesel air heater, except this is a diesel water heater. It has a burn chamber here where water passes through via these two 19 mil pipes. The water goes around this flames are shot into the burn chamber and heat the water and these are designed to preheat the engine in your vehicle in very extreme cold climates. And if I turn this over you'll see the bottom side is very similar to a Chinese diesel heater. You have an air inlet and an exhaust outlet and it has exactly the same dosing pump as a diesel air heater. They work very similar and to connect this up to the calorifier is really simple. So let's just quickly go over how you connect the diesel water heater to the calorifier and the engine all in the same loop. Let's start by taking a look under the bonnet of my van. Pretty much every petrol diesel car on the road will have two pipes disappearing up underneath the bulkhead and these would go to a heater matrix that then makes the heater inside the vehicle work. So to connect our chlorifier and preheater, what we do is tap into these two pipes. This one feeds water into the matrix, and this one feeds water back into the engine. And the water that circulates around these primarily goes around the top of the engine, which is the hottest part. So when I come to fit my chlorifier, I'm simply going to take the pipe off of the feed. We can undo this, take disconnect this pipe, and then put an extension into this pipe, run it down below the vehicle and towards our calorifier. And then the return pipe simply goes straight back into there. So we're basically just adding an extra loop into this system. Really simple, 100% effective, adds no extra strain on the engine. And all you're doing is using the excess heat from the engine rather than that heat going to atmosphere and going to waste we heat our water. So a really efficient way to heat water in your camper van. I do hope all that makes sense. Okay, so now we know where the hot water comes from. Let's talk about how the chlorifier actually works and uses that hot water to transform it into usable hot water for your shower. We'll take the preheater out of the loop for the moment, just to simplify things. So the chlorifiers are basically just a cylinder with coils inside it. So what we do, we have hot water from the engine, from those pipes I just showed you, going into this fitting here, and then coming out of here, going back to the engine. So we have water flowing in 
and out. This water does not mix with the water in your fresh water tank. It's kept separate by the coils inside the chlorifier. The fresh water that's stored in the living area of your van is actually fed into the bottom of the chlorifier. It fills up the tank, glug, 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 and then comes out of the top. And because it's passing through the coils inside that are heated by the engine, that heat is transferred to that water as it flows through the chlorifier. So you have cold water going in the bottom, hot water coming out of the top. Now although this looks rather complicated, it is really simple. This pipe that comes around the outside of the chlorifier takes some of that cold water and mixes it via this valve here with the hot water coming out because the hot water inside this tank can reach up to 85 degrees which is pretty much scalding so this is a safety device to make sure you haven't got scalding hot water coming out and getting fed to your taps of course you can control this as well if you want it colder you can screw this in and this will allow more cold water to mix with the almost boiling water coming out of the chlorifier. And of course the hot water coming out of the chlorifier going to your taps can be controlled in a traditional manner just like in any house. With your mixer taps you can control the temperature actually coming out of the taps mixing it with fresh cold water. But the great thing about this is this chlorifier holds 22 litres of water and when it's up to full temperature by the time you mix it with cold water you could actually expect to get about 30 to 40 litres of hot water from just one tank and this tank will stay hot for at least 24 hours after you've switched your engine off and the great thing is it will take about 20 minutes of driving to reheat this so we only have to go on a short journey and we've got a full tank of hot water again but like I said earlier, if we don't want to drive anywhere, we want to heat that water in an alternative manner, we can use 12 volts, 240 volts, or our engine preheater. And again, this just runs on diesel, so it's really cheap to run. And the bonus is with using an engine preheater, is that not only does this heat the water inside your chlorifier, it will also warm up your engine. So in the winter time, when you go to start your engine, it'll be nice and toasty and warm, it'll start up with no problems, and it'll, you'll be able to demist your windscreen super quickly, all thanks to having a chlorifier and an engine preheater. Now because we're increasing the length of pipes coming from the engine to the chlorifier, I mean it's probably going to be a good two meters length of pipe plus back again so we're adding four meters of piping to our engine we do actually need to fit an auxiliary pump just to help the pump in the engine to circulate that water a bit more efficiently so that's what this is for and we simply add that to the loop so the water coming from the engine will go through our pump through the preheater then in and out of the chlorifier back to the engine really simple system super efficient as well basically you're getting free hot water unless of course you're using the engine preheater so there you have it there is pretty much one two engine free preheater four ways to get hot water inside this chlorifier but it doesn't end there there is actually a fifth way you can heat water in this chlorifier that is by using let me just make some room here so there's our preheater there's our chlorifier and this some of you may have already heard of these this is a heater system designed by bobble vans i'll just get some of this stuff out of here and what this does is use the heat from a diesel air heater to convert it into hot water we have a heater matrix get it out of the bag for you so this works a bit like a radiator but in reverse rather than cooling water by passing air through it you actually have cold water going around this hot air going through it and that hot air warms the water that is going through this and that water circulates through a system and heats up the water that's inside the chlorifier and it uses these ducts as you can see if I put these on here you can, you can see these ducts are where the pipe work from your Chinese diesel heater puts air through this 
And the great thing about this is in the winter when you're warming the interior of your van with your diesel air heater, a byproduct of that hot air is you get hot water in your calorifier. It's a win-win. And that's why I really don't understand why more people don't use calorifiers in their camper vans. Now traditionally this calorifier would be used in a boat because it is quite large. The average size calorifier for a camper van I would recommend around about 10 litres. You can get them as small as 6 litres which is adequate. And obviously the smaller the calorifier the quicker the water is going to heat up inside it. But because I've got such a big van I can afford to have a bigger calorifier like this. And this calorifier is actually going to go up underneath my van. I'm not going to put it inside the van. I'm going to save space by hanging it underneath the van. So that's my job for today, is to actually fit this calorifier underneath my Mercedes Vario. Wish me luck. Now because there are electronics involved in this, and this is generally meant to go inside the vehicle, and not outside, but in this case I'm putting it outside, I need to make these electronics waterproof. Now the downside is one of these is 240 volt, one of these is 12 volt and they have temperature controls on them and if ever these overheat there's actually a trip switch that's, that flicks out and to reset it you have to push this button here or here depending on which one's tripped and if that happens I'm not going to be able to access this once I've sealed it so for safety's sake I'm actually going to turn the temperature down to about three quarters you can see there so we're going to take it off of the full which is plus and minus, and actually put them, I think about halfway between the halfway mark and the quarter mark. This will still give us hot water, it just hopefully ensures that these trips never trip out, because like I say, if ever they do trip out, it's gonna be very difficult to get this cover off once I've glued it down. This is the only thing I'm not sure about. But I wasn't originally planning on using any electric in this anyway. I'm just going to connect these up just in case the odd occasion I do need to plug this in. But the chances are I'll never need to use this. But I'm going to seal it anyway with mastic just in case. So I'm literally just going to squeeze this tiger seal down into the gap around here. I'm not going to do too much um, in case I ever do have to take it off I've already pre-planned um, this, I put these hangers in a couple of weeks ago. I've literally been waiting a couple of weeks just for parts. And I've been busting to get this fitted under here for, yeah, for what seems an ages. Purely because of waiting on parts and bits and bobs. Now originally I was going to rotate this strap on the calorifier and just have it hanging still the right way up with the feet at the top and have it hanging by this original strap. But then I realised that the welds in this strap don't look very significant and after all these are these feet are designed for this to calorifier to sit on a on a uh, on a surface. So that's why I've um, put the unistrut here and made the calorifier this way up purely so that it's in its original configuration I just thought it'd be a lot safer like this rather than rotating those straps all the way round and having it hanging right now I need oh, 
no one said it was easy, right? I just realised there's a nice little finishing touch. I've got these in caps. We can put those on. There you go. How lovely is that? <laughs> oh, this one's not going to go on. There you go. Wants to look nice. there's one thing I really do need to check and that is that I can still get to the temperature adjustment valve which is now right at the very top of the chlorifier and really close to the floor so hopefully I can still reach that I kind of guessed that I'd still be able to get to it yeah I can still get to that I'm going to open this up fully um, because my theory is the hotter the water coming out of the chlorifier the more cold water you need to add so therefore the less hot water you is going to come out of this which means it should last longer does that make sense yeah, perfectly sense so basically i'll use less volume but i'll still get more heat yeah, that's solid that is that's not going anywhere really pleased with that oh, i can't wait to try this out i'm really excited about this band build i've got to have plenty of hot water in this and i'm going to be able to have a proper luxury shower as long as i've got plenty of fresh water of course Oh, well this red valve here by the way, this is the pressure relief safety valve. So if there was too much pressure building up inside this tank, this release valve will relieve that pressure. Also, I could turn this tap to empty this tank um, if I want to winterize the vehicle. There you go. Bag of gubbins, a wiring harness, a water pump. These are very, all the fittings, as you can see the exhaust, exhaust pipe, the air intake, very similar to a cheap Chinese diesel heater. Even the dreaded ticking pump is the same by the looks of it. The horrid Jubilee clips, you won't be using those. I've never fitted one of these. I did have one fitted in an old Volkswagen I brought once. It was a German import. And in Germany, or some parts of Germany I believe, it's illegal to have your engine running to warm it up you have to have an engine preheater that's why you find so many of these on ebay second hand because they're from cars that have been scrapped right where am i going to fit that it's got to go that way up obviously it's got to go that way up because of the exhaust being at the bottom let's have a look under the engine bay see if there's room there so i think it will actually fit under here the water from here goes into my heater matrix and looking at the instructions, the diesel heater should go on the outlet of this, on the return. So, um, if I was to fit that there, and that way all the diesel fumes from this, if the diesel exhaust was to leak, there's no chance of the fumes getting into the actual van. That would be really good if I can get to the back of this. Let's have a look inside the van. Yeah, it means running the hot water pipe a little bit further to the chlorifier, but I think for safety's sake and for the fact that it'll be dry under here and this is where preheaters are supposed to be fitted this is where I'm going to fit the preheater just need to get rid of this god knows what that is it's like, a, it's like an old alarm system might have to get my big adjustable spanner on that or what most people call a hammer <laughs> right let's get this fitted Don't like the look at that. Fitting these type of things can cause rust issues. Yeah, there you go, nice clear space there. So I've drilled the necessary holes in the bulkhead and I've treated those holes with red, red oxide primer just to prevent any rust occurring there. I'm gonna wait for that red oxide primer to dry and then I shall bolt the preheater in position. Well, I'm glad I opted to plug this in first because that was not easy. We really had to struggle to get it in there to get this to clip to clip into place 
yeah, I would have struggled getting that in if I'd already put this in the van. All right, so next I'm gonna go ahead and put the fuel pipe on. Because I've got it that way in the van, I can get to this fuel pipe when it comes to fitting the nylon pipe to it. So that's not such a drama. Yeah, look at that. Should we use one of their Jubilee clips? Just to see if it worked. Oh my goodness me, it actually worked. Just for safe measure. I normally put two Jubilee clips on these. That ain't coming off of there. There we go. This air filter, for what it's worth. <laughs> Cut this on the end. when you need to be an octopus. Well there you go, I've managed to fit the exhaust. As you can see, it goes down through the inner wheel arch and underneath, I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. I've also used copper brake pipe rather than the plastic nylon pipe they supply you because it is rather close to this exhaust and I was worried that this plastic pipe was just a bit too close to the exhaust for my liking um, because if this leaks, obviously fuel is gonna go all on this really hot exhaust. And I really didn't like the look of that, so I've just went ahead and used some copper brake pipe. And I've also used copper brake pipe this end, just because, you know, there's a lot of vibration under here. And I can clamp this better to the uh, side of the van or underneath the van. And as you can see, the dosing pump is hanging there nice and loose. So hopefully that won't vibrate too much. I've gone ahead and connected the cables up for that. Now I figured out that if I mount the, the pump here, it's perfect because it's a perfect right angle that pump will hang there and then so the water will go from the heater matrix into the heater, from the heater and back down where this pipe should go. So this pipe I'll just take out. So if anything was to go wrong with this, I simply disconnect it and replace this pipe and we'll be good to go again. And I'm gonna use the same principle for the chlorifier. I'm gonna remove this pipe, which is the hot feed pipe and then this end, I'm going to fit a pipe that's going to come down to the chlorifier. The return pipe from the chlorifier will go up into here. And again, if something was to go wrong with the chlorifier, I simply need to disconnect it, replace this pipe, and we'll be good to go again. So by removing these two pipes and keeping them safe somewhere, either side of the system goes wrong. It's very simple to reconnect the original pipes, and hopefully that won't cause me any issues. So basically the chlorifier is going to be running off the hot side and the diesel preheater will be running off of the cold side of the heater matrix. And the reason I'm doing this is because if I was to do it in a continuous loop like I was originally going to, to, going to do, i.e. Uh, removing just this one pipe, having a pipe going into there, into the preheater, coming out, going down to the chlorifier, the return pipe would have to come up loop round and then go back into here and if that loop would actually cause an air trap and it could cause me all sorts of problems but by removing both of these pipes the preheater and the chlorifier will work independently of each other right i'm going to get a bucket and uh, drain the water out so we're just going to undo this tap up here which you probably can't see all you can see is the back of my hand so sorry about that once I'll crack it open a bit, you'll see. There it goes. There goes our coolant. Now what I'm going to do is take the radiator or the expansion tank cap off and then it'll make it flow easier. There you go. You can see straight away, as soon as I take the cap off, starts to flow and we don't need to drain all of the fluid out we only need enough so that um, the heater matrix and those pipes have got no water in them so I reckon about half this bucket should do it this bucket is a clean bucket so I can reuse this coolant although it does look a little bit clear it doesn't look very strong Maybe I'll just replace it. If I take five litres out, 
I'll put five litres of pure anti antifreeze back into it once I've finished, I think. So it looks pretty clean. I'm quite pleased with how clean that is. So it just goes to show this engine has been looked after. Um, after all, it was a council van. It, was, it did belong to a local council. And Richard did say that there was loads of service history with this van. But unfortunately, he's mislaid it. He can't find it. I'm still hoping that he may find it one day. Well, I think that is definitely more than five litres. So I'm going to call it that. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, stop it running out. Well, hopefully I've drained enough coolant out. So when I now disconnect these two pipes, I'm not going to get coolant to flood the workshop. Or more importantly, I'm not going to waste any of that coolant either. Um, yeah, it looks pretty tight up there. Let's get to these pipes. I'm sure we can do it. That's what I like about proper Jubilee clips. You don't have to use a screwdriver. You can actually use a socket because they've got a hex top on them. Could have done with a flexi drive, really. Never mind. We'll make do with what we got. Oh, look how easy that's come off. And I'm pleased to say that does look like a 19mm fitting, which is handy because I've brought about 10 metres of 19mm pipe. Now this piece of pipe, I'm not going to cut it, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to simply put it away somewhere nice and safe so that if there is a problem with this um, engine preheater, I can simply disconnect it, replace this piece of original pipe and we won't have a big issue. It won't be a drama. Oh, I think I need to take some more water out. Well, there appears to be more coolant in this engine than can fit in my bucket. I'm getting a kind of a deja vu feeling here. I think I might have had this problem with my sprinter. Anyway, I'm going to be using proper stainless steel um, Jubilee clips. So that's on there nice and ready. I'm going to cut this to length and then pop that pipe off. And before too much fluid comes out, pop the new pipe back on. Hopefully that way we won't lose so much um, coolant. Let's cut plenty off here, give it plenty of slack. I didn't really want to get coolant everywhere for two reasons really. Oops. I didn't want to flood the workshop. I didn't want to waste too much of it. Quick as I can, pop that one off. Put the new one on. That's it. Okay. Oh, we're dribbling. Well, there you go. That's the success. That's the return pipe fitted. And the reason I've done this one first is because that point down there is actually the lowest point in our water table, as it were. Um, this pipe comes out the top of the engine block, so it's quite high. So I shouldn't get any water coming out of this one when I disconnect it. Right now, the water pump, according to our instructions, which are very vague, I've got to say. So there's a diagram there of fitting this, and this is exactly how I've done it. So it's coming out of the heater matrix. And there is, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but there's darker arrows in this indicating flow of the coolant. So according to that, the water will go in the top and out the side. So I'll be fine putting that there and this should work out really well. Right, so that's a little stubby bit of pipe there. Let's see if this will go on there. God, bugger me. Maybe I should have done it the other way. Now, hopefully you're enjoying this video. If you are and you're finding it mildly entertaining or even slightly informative, then please do give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. And I really do appreciate your support. Thank you. Right, that's on there, like that. Yeah, that's tight enough, I've done it over tightening. Well, and strip the threads. Right now, piece of pot got across there. Where'd it go? Did it drop down there somewhere? I believe it did. I like the way they roll this up with these clips, because then you can just unroll it as you need it. And it stays rolled up. That's a really neat idea, that. I like that. So from there. 
sorry about the heavy breathing, it is cold in here today and I've not put my diesel heater on yet. And the reason I haven't put a diesel heater on is because the, well, the doors are open. We've got people coming and going today. So there's really no point shutting the doors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's any need to mount this pump to the actual body of the van. I think that's going to be perfectly fine now. That is it. That is pretty much it. Our preheater is now installed. All I need to do theoretically is put some power to it, connect the fuel line up. Obviously, I would need to put the coolant in it first, but that is pretty much how simple to fit an engine preheater is. It really is as simple as that. I'm not going to put power to it just yet because I need to do the calorifier as well. <laughs> Near disaster. I was just tidying those wires up and realised I hadn't done this Jubilee clip up. So this is what happens when you're filming and you forget to do stuff. So uh, yeah, it's a good job I realised I hadn't done it up. That would have been a bit messy. So this goes under the van towards the calorifier. We'll have to see how it goes. There's one edge there that I'm not happy about it rubbing against, but it's a quite a rounded off edge. I might have to get another piece of this later on, cut it and then make a sleeve around it to protect it. But this is really heavy duty pipe, so we should be fine. All right, let's get this off of here. Hopefully this will come out at the right angle. That won't make it too difficult now. So I'm just going to push that on there. I'm not going to put a Jubilee clip on it. I'm just going to leave it like that because later on I'm going to pull that off and uh, hopefully let all the air out of the system when I refill it with coolant. Just trying to thread these pipes through under here. Um, it's not that easy because they're such thick pipes. They don't like going around corners. Uh, I'll get a lot of comments on YouTube saying, oh you YouTubers, you make it look so easy. But believe me, that's because sometimes it is easy. <laughs> and other times it's not so easy. <laughs> oh dear. Times like this for instance. Gotcha. So I've plumbed in the return, basically because that was the easiest one to do first. And now the feed, so the water flows from the engine directly down this pipe to the chlorifier and then back to the engine into this pipe here. Sounded really easy in principle, but there we go. Trying to get to everything. It's a wee bit tight in here. A little bit tight. And that Jubilee clip looks like it was done up by a contortionist. I'm actually using the light from my camera um, so I can see what I'm doing. Got to get on there, you know you want to. Yeah, that's going to be worse. Oh, we're on. Oh, thank goodness. There we go. And the rest is history. Why would they do it that way up? So you say they've done it the other way up. It would have been a lot easier to get to. Obviously this Jubilee clip was put on here before the radiator was installed. It's safe to say it won't be going back like that. Oh, there's always one in it. All those three come off really easy. This one, not so much. This one isn't coming off easy. So it's time to crack out the special pipe removing tool. Look at that. I hate this thing because when, as you crimp it, there's a tendency to pinch your skin in there. And it freaking hurts. Oh, gotcha. It was gripping on in there. Did not want to give up. So there we go, that's our original piece of pipe. So I'm going to keep this somewhere safe just in case things don't go to plan. It doesn't work, but I'm, I'm about 98 percent sure it will work. But there's always that little voice in the back of your mind <laughs> saying, "Oh, you're doing the right thing, Mel." So, uh, so 
Make sure I get this dribbly kick going the right way this time. Yeah, I think not that way though. So yeah, I'm going to keep that piece of pipe just in case. Now because this pipe is the main feed to the calorifier, I'm going to go ahead um, and do this one up. I shall do this jubilee clip up. Now what I couldn't say is I've done it that way round. It would have been a lot easier. Hey. Thumbs up to Mercedes for just making things that little bit difficult. But I've got to say, so far I've enjoyed working on this van. This is nothing compared to the amount of work I've done on my Sprinter. Do that up as tight as I dare. I think that'll do. Yeah, that looks like it's pinched up nicely. Yep, that's not coming off. Right. They're not going anywhere. So there we are, that's that, that end of it done really. So I've taken a pipe that goes from there to there, added these two pipes into it, basically looped into that, and the pipes that were once here to there, I've looped in the heater. And at any time, if anything was to go wrong with any of this, I've still got my original pipes intact that I can simply replace if I should have to. Alright, so I've got one more pipe to attach to the calorifier, then we can put some water in this and uh, see if that water continues to circulate. <laughs> this is a 4.2 litre diesel engine, so I'm pretty sure it's got a massive water pump in it, and I'm hoping this will be fine. If for any reason the water isn't circulating like it should, I can always fit another inline pump that runs continuously all the time the engine is running just like they have on a Mercedes Sprinter. This, this pump that operates the diesel heater is a free flowing pump, so this shouldn't restrict any flow of water even though it's not running. But it might be a good idea to get it running to bleed it, help bleed it through. But if I run this with no water in it, it'll probably bugger it up, so we won't do that. Right, let's connect the last pipe to the purifier. Okay, so this is the last pipe. What a momentous occasion. <laughs> well, not really, but yeah, I like to think so. It's just going to go there like that, and it cut that around about there. Let's cut it a little bit long just in case. Yep, that's perfect. <laughs> Don't forget the clip. That way. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice tight fit, that is. Yeah, a nice snug fit. I do like that. Right, let's get this jewelry clip done up. And then we can get some water in it. <laughs> Hopefully it won't leak. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my calorifier fitted and plumbed in. Really simple. So, now hot water from my engine is going to come along this pipe, go through the coil, come back to the engine via this pipe and then cold water from my fresh water tank will go into here and cause hot water to come out of this top one. So have a nice hot luxury shower which is exactly what I wanted. Right, I need to cable tie these pipes up or put some pipe clips in them, make them a bit secure, stop them rubbing anywhere and it will be golden. Right, so now all my calorifiers all connected up, the engine preheat is connected up. Um, I need to try and get water back into this and I'm not really sure how easy it's going to be to get water back into here uh, without creating an air leak or an air, air lock. So rather than put a brand spanking new five litre uh, container full of antifreeze in here, I'm going to put the antifreeze that I took out back into it. If I can't get all that antifreeze back in, then I know I've got a problem with an airlock. This does look quite a strong mixture actually now, it's up here. There's definitely an airlock somewhere. Which was it I was kind of expecting anyway. I just think, so when this is running, the water pump is going to pump water from the engine, down to my calorifier, and then out of here. It's going down slowly. Now remember there is a, there's a thermostat 
So the thermostat is what stops the water flowing when the engine's cold. And because the engine's cold, the water isn't going to flow properly until that thermostat opens. But usually there's a tiny little hole in the thermostat that allows a little bit of water to flow. And that hole should allow the air to come out. And it is, it's going down. Oh, there you go, get your bubbles. So that's the air escaping through that tiny little hole in the thermostat. Every now and again it'll go boop. Just hear it. There you go. So as the water comes down, the air is coming out through the thermostat. And it is literally, it's a tiny little, probably three millimetre hole, maybe even two, only two millimetres. And that's why we get issues with airlocks in vehicles. A big blob just come out of the top of there. So, yeah, there you go. It's, it's, it's going to clear itself eventually. Eventually it will bleed through, hopefully. Let's put the rest of this in. That's nice and clean as well. Right. It's just a waiting game now for it to settle down. I'll probably have to put some more antifreeze in here. I never ever top up a car with just pure water. Always add antifreeze, never just water. So I'm going to pop to the shops and get myself some antifreeze. Oh dear, right, I've been shopping. Got some noodles, some really long cable tyres, and more importantly, some blue antifreeze. Right. Let's finish this off. You can see it goes above the max mark. Then as the air comes out, it will slowly go down again. It's just a matter of being patient and waiting for that air to naturally come out. I've actually got some water leaking out of here, which is a good sign. Let's be patient and just see what happens, see if this eventually goes down. Because like I said earlier, it is a tiny little hole in the um, thermostat that just lets that water gradually even out. Let's top this right up. Well, I've left it a little while now. There's nothing coming out of here. So I've got Jez in the front. He's going to start the engine up. So what's going to happen is the engine is going to pump water down to the chlorifier and up out of here. Um, that should clear all the air out of the system. Right, oh, Jez, crank her up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. We got water, look at that. That flows really well as well. I'm really pleased. Cheers, buddy. It's snug in there, isn't it? Oh, well. Meet Jez, everyone. You don't mind being on camera, do you? No, I don't mind. That. <laughs> Hello. Meet Jez, everyone. Jez is um, a new resident of the barn. Yeah, first proper day in here. First proper day. Yeah. yeah. Have you settled in yet? Yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Loads to do. And Jez is only going to be here for a couple of months because he's finishing off his Roughly, van. Yeah. You've already partly converted your van. Yeah, it's all the stuff I want to do undercover. Yeah, and he's got a really interesting bed. It's a Murphy bed, isn't it? Yeah. So when you're ready, yeah, not, not now. Yet. I'll show you later. We'll, um, <laughs> we'll have a look, and I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in your, your bed system because it's quite unique, I've, and it's in a unique position in your van as well. Yeah. He's got it the other way around. Yeah. It's what most people do. I love it. Yeah, it I like people that okay think out of the box. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll catch up with you later. Yeah. Thank you for your assistance. Appreciate that. Right, let's get this pipe done up, and then we'll. Uh, yeah, that water's gone down, obviously, because most of it come out the top. Right, so I'm going to do this up and then get the engine running again and make sure all these pipes get nice and warm. And if they do get nice and warm, I know I've got water flow. Back in a minute. Now, because this pipe is the last pipe in the loop before going back to the engine, once this one gets warm, I know it's, I'm a, it's, it's been a success. As long as this gets hot and it's the same temperature as this one, I oh, know it's all going to be okay. Now I do need to check that the heater inside the cab is actually still working. Let's just turn that on. Yeah, nice flow of hot air through there. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, that's nice and warm. So my demister still works. And uh, 
one of the first signs that a car or van needs water is the demisters don't work because that's the highest point in the water system so if ever your uh, demister stops blowing hot air you know you've got a problem there you go that's working so i think we can safely say it's a success it's a outright 100 percent success i've now got a way of getting free hot water to my shower Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Now whilst I was waiting for the engine to warm up to check the water was circulating, I went ahead and insulated and tidied up the water pipes that I've slung up underneath. This is what they ended up looking like. I'm really pleased how this has worked out. As you can see, they're nice and neat now underneath there. They run right along up under the wheel arch and also there right at the back, you can just about see the exhaust for the engine preheater. There you go. I'll probably neaten this up a little bit more later on. Yeah, and a bit more of this insulation. But anyway, there you are. That's what it's ended up looking like. And just again, just to show you that exhaust, there's the engine preheater exhaust. It simply exits out through the inner wheel arch. So the exhaust fumes will come out through here. Not a problem at all. There we go. Oh, nearly fell over. <laughs> I can't actually try the engine preheater. heater. I can't test it to see if it works until I've actually got diesel going to this. And my diesel for the preheater is going to come all the way from the back of the van. That's why I've not connected up the pipe because I want to suck the diesel through. So I'm going to be using this tank for my diesel. And you're probably wondering why on earth am I doing this and not just taking diesel from the main tank of the van. Now because I'm trying to go gasless I'm going to have a multitude of diesel appliances in my van. That's the reason I'm using a separate fuel tank because I don't want to be burning road fuel to run all these appliances. I would much rather use either red diesel or kerosene to run those diesel appliances. Like my engine preheater, my diesel heater that's going to be in the van and also I'm going to have a diesel powered cooktop in this van. So that's why I'm having a separate fuel tank, but we'll save fitting this fuel tank for another video. Talking of videos, a lot of people have been asking why Becky hasn't been on my channel, why she's not here at the barn helping me build out my van. Simple reason is Becky's been working. And she's also started up her own YouTube channel. So if you'd like to catch up with Becky, then check out her latest video. I'll put a link to that video right here. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you very soon. Until half an hour.